Fish. Hey everybody, I'm Curtis Fry with Fly Fish Food, and tonight we are going to talk about scissors. The title of our video is Which Fly Tying Scissors Are Best? And newsflash, we're probably not going to get to the bottom of that because anytime you try to apply best to anything in fly fishing, an internet rumble erupts and people's feelings get hurt. So as to avoid all that, tonight I'm going to talk about some of my favorite styles of scissors and what they're used for. But we're going to stick to, and there's a lot of scissors that uh, are not on our list here and I apologize in advance we're not there's a thousand pairs of different times, kinds of scissors we're not intending to leave anybody out but we can only focus on the ones we have here um, unless your scissors just don't cut when, in which case you should get other ones uh, most of the scissors that we have and that we've reviewed and when we use they're they're good scissors so but let's talk about a few things uh, when I try to determine what scissors I'm going to use. So first off, we're talking functionality. What I'm talking about here is what I call EDC, everyday cutting. Every scissor out there, and there's bunches of different ones, is going to have a specific use typically in mind. So when we say EDC, everyday cutting, we're talking about scissors that you're going to sit, you sit down and tie most flies, you're going to pick those scissors up, and those are the ones that you're going to use day in and day out. Now, there are going to be scissors for different applications, like my famous wire cutting scissors that I've had for years and years, and I just use them to cut wire, and that's it. Curved scissors. Synthetic awesome Dr. Slick scissors that I use to cut anything that I don't want to ruin my other scissors on and are still too good for wire. Hair thinning scissors. And the list goes on and on. So there's a lot of different types of scissors application-wise that we're not going to get into. But what we're focusing on today is just nitty-gritty, everyday cutting scissors. And what are some of the things you look for in a good pair of scissors? Okay, we're going to start off by talking about three things that I look for when it comes to just my everyday, good old, sturdy, stalwart fly tying scissors. Number one, I want to have a fine point. So if you look at scissors in general, most scissors in general are going to have, each blade is going to have a width. So imagine that width being the closest, at least of one blade, that you can get to cutting your material to the base of whatever it is you're cutting. So in this case, if you're trying to cut thread, it's as close as you can get the thread cut and leave a little tiny whisper of thread equal to the width of one of these blades. Okay, the other thing related to that is I want to have a good taper. So some scissors I've seen have really fine tips and the blades are thin, but they, they taper up very quickly and get fatter in this section um, a lot quicker. And I still like to be able to have that tip a little bit tapered out a little further and you'll see some, in, in some photos I took that you can see the difference of those. And that allows me to get more of my scissor in tighter. So if you've got hackle, or if, you, if you've got uh, hair or something in there and you want to weave your scissors in, it's nice to have that fine taper uh, last a little longer up the shaft of the scissors. Okay, now another thing that I always look at when it comes to scissors is the blade sharpness. And when I say sharpness, I mean, you could probably take most fly tying scissors on the market today, and if you were to cut something down in the, the V area or down closer to the joint, it's going to cut it. What we're talking about is way up here in the tippy top points, can you cut like uh, some synthetics or can you cut one fiber of material, one little tiny piece of thread? And if you can do that, that means the scissors maintain its edge and sharpness 
all the way to the very tip top point, then that's a good pair of scissors. I've seen a lot of scissors that do well cutting in, you know, 90% of the blade, but when you get up to the very tip top there, that's when they start to have some problems. Okay, and then the third thing is I like the scissors to maintain their edge. So I've tied with scissors that are really good that lose their edge within a couple of months of solid tying, which isn't bad depending on how much you're tying. So, but that's not ideal if you're spending 30 bucks for a pair of scissors, you want them to last a little bit longer than a couple of months. So there, most of the scissors that I'm gonna talk about tonight, and we're not gonna go super detail with each pair, but most of these will hold an edge uh, for a decent amount of time. So I, I would call these high quality scissors and um, you can depend on them mostly keeping an edge. Now it depends on what you do with them. If you're gonna cut EP fibers all day long, they will lose the edge quicker. So if you have synthetics, other things that are, you know, if you're cutting foam or plastics or paper, um, maybe opt for a different pair of scissors so that you don't dull your really good ones. So these everyday cutting scissors, I tend to like to be the pointiest, sharpest, thinnest blades, but I don't use them for every single application out there because I want them to last longer. All right, another consideration, and I don't have a problem because my fingers are not really thick, but some people have big fat fingers. I won't name who I know who has big fat fingers that complains about small scissor hole sizes, but the scissor hole size matters. So you need to make sure that you can get your fingers into the holes and operate them freely. So there are some scissors that have smaller holes and some that have bigger holes and biggest holes like these Loon all-purpose scissors. Uh, they're great, they're comfortable. You can actually fit two fingers in this one, uh, but they're great because you can fit and have enough space to have the scissors not get caught on your fingers after you go to set them down. And then, like I said, all of these scissors are kind of your everyday, multi-purpose, everyday cutting scissors. We're not talking about the specialty scissors, like things you may want to use for deer hair, uh, curved scissors, and that sort of thing. Those are different applications. These are everyday cutting, so that's what, you know, you have to keep that in mind as well. And so let's talk about the different styles of these scissors, and I kind of lump them into maybe three or four different categories. So when you're looking for a scissor, here's some of the things to think about. Okay, the first class of scissors I'm gonna talk about are razor scissors. And most of the brands that you're gonna see for razor scissors have this little knob, the tensioner knob, that you can use to adjust uh, really how much pressure is put between the blades. It helps you, uh, you can, if you loosen that, it's harder to cut things as finely. So if you get that tension knob uh, dialed in, and you sometimes may, may back off, so you need to check that from time to time but that will help you get more tension and therefore cutting force as you cut through things. So we've got the Dr. Slick's razor scissors, the Rising Rattlebass Stellar scissors, and which Rising, by the way, Rattlebass is a way better name than Stellar, and Loon razor scissors. These three are very, very comparable. Comparable? Comparable? Um, they have one serrated blade and one smooth blade. So the serration gives you a little bit of grabbiness and the smooth side gives that fine cutting. Now, um, I'm gonna throw a picture up here and you can see how these blades compare. You'll notice that they do have a nice taper to them. The blades uh, are relatively, at least it amongst the different uh, brands here, are fairly similar in their thickness. And so all around, razor scissors are a good kind of midpoint uh, or, or mid-range price point for scissors. They, uh, I have found, don't typically hold their uh, sharpness as long as some of the other kinds of scissors, like tungstens, um, that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but they're great scissors. The razor scissors as a group are our highest selling scissors on our website, and that's kind of how we gauge it. Uh, we don't go around advocating a specific kind, but... Um, the razor scissor types are, are very popular. So again, uh, these are a good choice for everyday cutting. They'll cut everything from thread on up to uh, two foot diameter logs. It just takes you a little longer. Um, now, next. Well, actually, one other one. Uh, Tiemco has what they call a razor scissor, and it's 
one of the ones with, in the group that doesn't have the little knob. Uh, these are probably, for me at least, it has overall the longest tapered, finest tipped, uh, sharpest, and thinnest blades out of all these. And you can see that in the, in the picture here. Um, but we're going to go through these types and kind of compare them so you can see how the blades differ. Okay, another group of scissors is what I would just call kind of our all-purpose scissors. So Dr. Slick and Loon both have um, what they call the all-purpose style scissor. And so these actually do have fine points and the uh, they've got good tapers on them. Um, they're usually priced lower than the razor scissors. So if you're a little bit more budget conscious, then these all-purpose scissors will be good. And um, they're still going to cut and, and have that that fine tip in there for you. And then kind of the last category are just some odds and ends ones. Um, and I'll throw in there the tungsten scissors. Dr. Slick and Tiemco both have a tungsten and these are coincidentally both have black handles. Um, they're very durable, probably the most durable of the scissors that we're featuring here today. And they also have very fine tips. The Tiemco's have a much finer tip than the Dr. Slicks, but both are very sharp and hold their, hold their uh, edge longer. One very odd man out and one that I highly recommend are the Tiemco Deer Hair Fine Point Scissors or Deer Hair Fine Scissors. Don't know why they call them Deer Hair because these literally, pro with the only other competitor that would come close on its tip would be the Tiemco uh, razor scissors. But these ones are very fine tipped, um, super, super uh, good for getting in and getting stray fibers one at a time, cutting your uh, threads really close to the tie off point. And then there's another class of scissors uh, commonly referred to micro tip. And uh, Loon has some of these, Dr. Slick has some, and or, or arrow tip. And the the tips are a little they're tapered a little differently but overall um i personally don't find them to be much more different than say the razor scissors tips so we can compare these going down uh on this photo here in a sec and then some other one dark horse kind of scissors are these renzetti scissors they're a little stubbier the taper is a little thicker quicker but these will get in there and they're very fine tips um, they will get in there and cut anything. They hold a blade like no other. Um, and so these are great scissors as well. So these are what I would call our everyday cutting scissors. And so now let's go through them and look at kind of a comparison. I meticulously stacked these like the big nerd I am and finally got a good picture so that we can compare against. So let's start at the top. All right. Because the razor scissors have that little knob, I can't stack them all at once. So um, we'll throw up this picture again, which is just of the razor scissors um, compared between the three of them, Dr. Slick, Loon, and Rising. And again, they're, they're very similar. Now let's switch up to the main comparison photo. And with the, starting with the Loon razor scissors on top, and just working our way down. Now, as you, you work your way down, you can see, as this is close up, there's a pretty big difference on some of these scissors with respect to how fine the tips are, how thick the blades are, you can't tell sharpness, but and how well the taper comes to a, a, a more gradual taper on the blades. So, um, right below the loons, you see Dr. Slick All Purpose. And like I said, the if you look at those as a they're relatively inexpensive. They've got a really fine point and thin blades, so they're, they're a great choice overall. Okay, below the all-purpose Dr. Slicks are the Dr. Slick Microtips. Um, these ones, again, I'm not a huge fan of Microtip moniker because, in my opinion, the all-purpose ones look to be a little finer. Uh, at this angle. If you look at the other angle, the, the scissors kind of uh, have a little bit of a, a different uh, shape taper if you look at them from the top. And so it does look finer in that respect. 
Um, jumping down from that, we have the Loon All-Purpose. So kind of in that range, we've got three different all-purpose scissors. The Loon ones are also very um, uh, tapered, probably a little thicker than the Dr. Slick, but again, not a big difference that you're going to notice in, in day in, day out tying. All right, the next ones below those are the Tiemco Tungsten Scissors. And right off the bat, you can see a very marked difference between anything above that pair of scissors. You can see they come to a microscopic point, and the taper is pretty decent. And again, with them being tungsten, they are super durable. So um, I'm a big fan of the tungsten in general, but specifically the Tiemco Tungstens. All right, one step down from the Tiemco Tungstens, we've got the Renzetti scissors that I showed. And again, you'll notice the blade is not as long, and, uh, but they still have a very fine point and the blades are nice and uh, slender. So you can get in and cut uh, very fine things with those. They're great scissors. Now, below the Renzetti's are the Dr. Slick Tungstens. And um, you can see on those, comparing to, say, for instance, the Tiemco Tungstens, they're also very fine, maybe a little uh, thickness, a little bit more thickness on the blade, but not by a ton. But those, again, they're tungsten, super durable. All right, going one down, we have one of the dark horse that I mentioned, and that is the Tiemco Deer Hair Fine Scissors. If you look at those, it could be argued that those are the finest tips of the bunch. But if you look at the one just below that, that's the Tiemco Razor Scissor. And again, it doesn't have the adjustable knob like the other razor, but you can see that those blades are just as pointy, just as fine, probably, and the, the blades themselves are, are very thin and, and uh, allow you to get in to uh, cut things right close to, to the cutoff point. So as you look at these in, you can see a fair bit of variation in thickness and points, but overall, these are going to be good scissors for you. So the question is, which ones are the best? And again, I'm not going to tell you that there is the best. I personally tie mostly for my everyday cutting with the, drum roll, brrr, Tiemco razor scissors. Um, I've gone back and forth. I have a ton of scissors. And I, I swap off scissors for different purposes. I may take some different ones when I'm traveling. But um, I actually have all the pairs that are featured here, and so I've used them all. But if I had to rate my experience with getting in there, cutting things really super close and accurately, um, not having the blades dull and, how, and the heft in my hand, the Tiemco Razor Scissors are uh, my number one pair of scissors. But again, there's a lot of good scissors here. Um, you're not going to make a bad choice by going with any of the other ones. Uh, one of the huge disadvantages to the Tiemco Razor Scissors is they're not cheap. You can get the all-purpose scissors for like a fourth of the cost. So if budget's a big thing, you're probably going to be just fine with some of these other ones. But anyway, I hope you've gotten a few little nuggets of information from this to help you find which are the best fly tying scissors for you there is no such thing as best. We don't want to hurt any feelings. Again, these are all good scissors, and the ones you use are probably really good too. But these are some of the ones that we use. We see a lot of other people use, and so we figured we'd throw this out there. If you have any other scissors that you want to have us look at, put them in the comments below. And in the comments below or in the description below, I'm also going to put a link to all these scissors so that you can see them. And if you're so inclined to click and buy them, we will put them in a little bag and send them to your house. We're kind of good at that. Okay, that is all. Stay tuned for one of our next upcoming videos where we're going to talk about how to choose the right fly tying scissor for the application. Deer hair, dry flies, synthetics, you name it. And But for now, you can find all these scissors on our store at store.flyfishfood.com.
Thank you.